Seven o'clock. Yeah, did you take your tablet? Yeah. Before we came. So that's good, we're all getting in. <laughs> oh dear. So we can get home for it. It's still chilly outside, isn't it? Have you got a minute to go? We've got to seven o'clock. Yeah, I think my, my phone's a minute short. Right, so welcome everybody. Nice to see you all here. A bit chilly out there now, isn't it? Couldn't believe the frost this morning, could you? It was incredible, wasn't it? Pond in our garden, it just smashed the ice. Well, I didn't fridge it, but uh, there we are. So, um, right then, so that's absolutely brilliant. So we will now carry on with the council meeting itself. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Right, um, apologies for absence. Um, Lynn can't, can't make it, she is really very quiet at the moment. So, but I think we're all clear, aren't we? Apart from that. So that's brilliant. Um, 213, there's announcements. Well, not a lot's happened since our last meeting. Um, we've, um, the main thing, of course, was Wasseling, wasn't it? And it's Saturday. How many of you were there? Wasn't it absolutely incredible? It really, really was. And uh, the shotguns, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you not have a shotgun. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, that was really wonderful. And um, uh, the other thing was that, that today um, we had a Summer Valley Working Group. And this goes back to um, a, a group of us together from the whole of the Summer Valley. Um, <coughs> we went out to visit Froome a while ago to see what they've been doing to get the town from a very little backward town to, to what it is now. People are going there all the time. They've always got things on. All their shops have got people in. And um, it was absolutely amazing to be taken round by a couple of the councillors and officers and be shown things that go on in the town. And so the idea is that what can we do within the Summer Valley, working together, um, to develop our own area and get it going again. Um, so that was a meeting today and there will be more coming up. Uh, so um, that's, and anybody who's interested to come and do things, then that would be great. So um, pretty much that's it from me today. Um, so items 214, declarations of interest. Any? No. <coughs> okay. Two one five exclusion of the press and public. We do have an item. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Two three eight. So we'll be. Um, is everybody happy with that? Yep. Yep. Okie doke. Um. <coughs> Yeah. It was just, I'm not sure what quite when the right time is to mention this, but I'd like two, to three, pro propose bringing 234 up before we discuss the budget. Let me just. Uh, <coughs> okay, so if everybody uh, is happy with that, we'll bring in 234 um, after 221. Okay? okay? All right. So we're on to 216, the minutes of the last meeting. Anyone got any comments, please? No? No? Okay, so is uh, everybody happy to uh, agree those? Proposal? Brian, second, Richard. Everybody happy? Yeah? Okay, lovely. So I'll sign those when we the end of the meeting. Um, 217, receive verbal reports from Town Council Standing Committee. I think I'm happy for that one, isn't it, Manny? Uh, thank you. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, the Planning Committee met. Um, there were two important or significant planning applications that were considered. Uh, one uh, 
relates to um, an access way um, to the top of Silver Street, uh, which has been we've been asked to be re it's actually been reassessed following our judicial review um, on the amendment side. So we've had an opportunity to to have subsequent comment in, um, which could have been quite useful. But rather than comment on the application in question. Uh, the committee decided to reiterate its previous comment about the, a different planning application in amended. Uh, that was our decision. Uh, the second um, significant application was for uh, Dragonfly's application for um, a coffee kiosk uh, by the Leisure Centre um, with the idea they could have a drive through offering to increase um, their, their income. So we did support that application, but we qualified our support um, by suggesting that we didn't see the point of the drive through and we thought the drive through should also incorporate a toilet facility. Um, uh, so I really hope that that application, the planning officer will listen to our support. Otherwise, this town council may have accidentally or otherwise jeopardised business, leisure, and public convenience. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, 218 to hear reports from councillors attending meetings of outside body. Anyway, uh, some significant uh, items. Now, we had a pres uh, presentation by Dr. Alex Lowbottom who is the electric vehicle lead for Thames. That doesn't mean to say he actually carries the electricity, but he's the lead officer. Um, and he's <coughs> talking about charging points for electric vehicles, public charging points in more rural, more rural areas, because uh, it's going to be difficult if you buy an electric vehicle and you have no driveway and your house runs straight onto the street and there's no rear access <coughs> so <coughs> these public uh, points are going, going, going to be needed um, so they've got a couple of um, uh, uh, a few schemes such as hubs <coughs> uh, a hub based around <coughs> community building which might which would have parking spaces so uh, one or more of those spaces could be given over to charging um, now I asked about Mr Norton because I don't think he's got a public charging point um, but as we are not exactly rural he's uh, made a joke <coughs> of this consideration um, another thing, uh, ALCA, that's the um, Asian Local Councils Association, has uh, Deborah White as their officer and she manages the organisation very well and she's retired after, well, I don't know how many years, but uh, I've known her since I was a councillor. <coughs> So this is going to involve the staffing review, so there could be a restructuring of how ALCA is, ma is uh, managed. In. So uh, we await that. Um, there's a sad lack of take-up in training. ALCA do set up training um, sessions that have a whole library of training sessions. Um, and it's felt that councillors in general could um, benefit from uh, some initial training when they become councillors so that they know what they they know what is in store for them when when they're shipping into training and um, the next thing of course is june would be the agm yeah the agm uh, the date is to be picked there. And that's the end of my diatribe. Okay. Anyone else got any pieces? Yes, Michael. Yes, I've just got back from uh, Radstock where there's uh, something else called the uh, Semi Rally Workshop, actually, which uh, 
um, you must have mentioned an earlier iteration of. Um, this was a meeting with consultants <coughs> that Baines is employing to um, start putting in ideas, uh, some kind of strategies for the next local plan as such, rather than the partial update we've, we've, we've just had. Um, it was very well attended, um, but I can't say that uh, I noticed anything um, unusual coming out of it. So all I did was uh, try and put forward what we value in our community, um, which included green spaces, included the water, um, <coughs> included a, um, a sustainable balance of uh, housing and jobs. And you know, I think those points um, got across, but um, they're not new. So just to let you know that's going on. Thank you. Anybody else need to add anything? No? Okay, then we'll go on to item 219, accounts for payment over 250. Consider cancelling the street marshals. Um, shall I start on something? Yeah. Um, it's, it's 12 years now since uh, there are still a number of us here who were part of setting up Miss in the Norton Town Council. Um, and having the marshals was one of the ideas for improving the town and community life, which uh, we came up with. Um, there was also the town park. Welton Brook Walk area, and of course the transformation of the town hall, uh, the orchard hall, most of the things which uh, the Smith of Norton Town Council has sought to achieve in those 12 years have been things which are front loaded in terms of cost, and also things which can be <laughs> have the distinct possibility of finding funding um, outside the uh, the council tax base, which which we've succeeded in doing, but the, the marshals are a contrast to that. The marshals are not front loaded; they are an ongoing and indeed increasing cost, and so it's quite right that they should be reflected on and and, and reconsidered, in my view. Um, we didn't envisage, I think, twelve years ago, that employing marshals would be a permanent uh, fixture. On the costs of the town council, the, the nighttime economy needed a helping hand, and we felt in a position to do it. But I don't think we envisage that it will be a permanent one. Um, as I said in the form, um, we're very unusual indeed, especially as a small town council, in conducting this kind of arrangement. Um, we happen to have at this moment an opportunity 
since the current marshals have uh, ceased uh, their contract. And it comes at also at a moment when we find ourselves under budget pressure because of the quite uh, legitimate uh, costs which were undertaken for those other excellent projects, especially the town halls. Um, so I, I, I put it forward that this is the time when, um, at least for the time being, we should say we will leave the policing of the, of, of, of the, uh, of the nighttime economy to others, those who profit from it, who have spoken tonight, <laughs> and those who uh, are employed to do it, like the police. And for the moment, we could, we could have a pause. If we want to reinstitute it at a later date, of course, we can try to do that. So that's my proposal that for now we take this opportunity to suspend our support of Marshall. Yes? Yeah. So um, it's very difficult, obviously, everything is. We've had people seeing that the precepts going too high, don't cut services, cut services. Um, I was a little bit alarmed that the, the Marshall budget did jump by 40% for any sort of system. 40% is a big increase. You look at the budget, you think, well, that's just gone right up. Um, so instantly, we have to look at that. Does it have to be that high? Um, I, I too looked around and couldn't find many town councils that pay really for marshals, and certainly not as much as we do. So Bath, for instance, they get businesses to pay for the marshals. That is probably easier than Bath because they've got more businesses than we do. But um, they don't pay for it out of the precept because the Bath precept is so small. Um, but it is a big bill for us, um, and I think it probably is. The, Initial budget of twenty thousand pounds a year seems very very high, and um, I, I would I would think rather than necessarily cut, cutting that budget totally, I think that budget could be heavily reduced, um, and then we could look to find different ways to support the security services that the council provide. I'm quite a big fan of. Um, other security measures as well, um, like for instance CCTV. Um, we've got a lot of vandalism, but we don't have a lot of vandalism in the areas that are covered with CCTV. It's worked very well for us. We've had people in coming in and apologising. Um, I think there are parts of this town that feel dangerous, that need to be uh, tidied up, need to be better lit. These things all cost money, and I think that's part of a general strategy of improving the the kind of the feeling of the town. Um, I, I think £28,000 just on the Marshall budget is too much. Um, I think we should be looking to, to budget about half of that and uh, looking if other firms want to come in and help support the council, that's more than welcome. But I think that's a reasonable budget for this a, a council of this size to, to put forward. Yeah, Brian. Uh, just as a quick, uh, uh, the Marshalls don't start till quite late on in the evening and part of the reason for having them was to make people feel more secure in the town um, going to restaurants and going out for meals and that sort of thing but I think most people visiting the town for those types of reasons you know, just going out for meals and things um, will probably be gone home by the time the marshals have started and I'm not sure that they uh, perform that that role to um, to help the general public sort of feel safer. No, I think I agree with Brian and Michael. And we, we just can't afford it as a town. <coughs> so, um, do you think worries? Sorry, it's very worried that what will happen when we if we stop the ordinance? We have had. Um, that the wardens, marshals rather, have had a very busy time in the, since COVID, uh, <clears throat> and most week, most weeks, their reports have, con have uh, contained incidents, several incidents, and there was one serious incident when the marshal was attacked. Um, and it was punched so badly that his injury was uh, life changing. Now then, if we pull these people off, off uh, 
uh, pray our firm blessing. <coughs> Who's going to stop those people who are very belligerent, aggressive, individualistic from causing um, harm to innocent bystanders? And Arsenal, I think, has done a very good job in <coughs> minimising that risk and it was worrying me that it was worrying me that we um, that we stopped them. We did have a budget of about eighteen thousand before, and um, somehow or other, during <coughs> Rivers's term, it's leapt up ten thousand. I'm not too sure that I know why. <coughs> um, but I think we should. I think we should keep a sturdy budget in there to meet the uh, to meet the service. Well, uh, contrary to what I've heard already tonight, I personally think the police are there. We 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 pay for the police. They should be the people who are enforcing the public law and order, not uh, personally the, the marshals. Agreed. <coughs> I. I, I agree, you know, from the sense really that the marshals have done a good job. Raised the panel. Yeah, um, but that we need to look at how much we're paying towards them. So I, I would be for us looking at the amount we're paying and the reduction to some degree of what we pay. The the meeting we had, the cat meeting we had, was, was very, which I think you were at, it was very, you know, very positive. A lot of good things came from that. But, well, I don't know whether they came from it, the meeting itself was very good. That needs following up. So, I agree with Sean in that this needs to be consultation and we need to work into it. So let the businesses think, figure out what is what they what they really need and what we, how we can do that better, or, or say at the same time, save ourselves from <coughs> the expenditure. The other thing I'm kind of aware of is that town is very very quiet in terms of as well as just having this one option. I didn't support. Having a street marshal from the very beginning, all these years ago, and I do believe they've run their course. Well, so yeah, I for think what it should be come up. Mm. Sorry? I think it should be police. We should have more police here. Well, well, we can't do anything about that, can Sorry? we? Unfortunately. No, but Baines can. It's not our responsibility, to be honest. No, it's not. Unfortunately, we'd love it if we could, but. So what we've had is um, straight, we don't want the marshals anymore. So would someone like to propose that? Michael, anyone would like to second it? Steve? I have no idea, but maybe I'll right. do it. We also have another one that we keep the marshals, but we look at the budget. We, well has continued to reset the security budget. Right. Of, of, of roughly half of our budget. And that can be spent on marshals if they need it, when they need it, perhaps boosted by firms. It can also be spent on other security measures which could also be effective. So would someone like to second that idea? The motion is then to keep the marshal or the security budget. budget. Oh, okay. Yes. The security budget. So there's the second one is that we keep the budget and decide what it's going to be spent on security wise. Reduce the budget. Reduce the budget. Reduce the budget. Okay. We haven't decided as yet what the budget would be, so yeah. So there would be a budget. Because at the moment we don't have we don't have we haven't we haven't employed marshals and we've employed the marshals that are now not here and some of the marshals have stepped in in the interim but they haven't gone through the process of being appointed so that's why we, we went through the attendance mm -hmm. process so when we get to that later we might be clearer about yes that. That so we yeah yes please with the second proposal that of course would mean stopping that Marshals, because you couldn't have marshals and the secondary proposal. 
The secondary proposal, did I get it wrong then? Mm. Is that the, there would be a budget to be used for security, which could be the marshals, or it could be the cameras put up, or <coughs> whatever. Well, if right. Right. In the first instance, you can't do the second one without stopping the first. No, we're, mm -hmm. we're going to go through the voting session in just a minute. I just wanted to get the ideas that people wanted to vote for. Yes, Brian. Um, well, I personally think that the whether we have the budget that we allow for security measures should come up in the budgeting section. Yeah. Um, as a sort of part of that process, and that um, this. Yeah. Uh, motion is that we we don't continue with the with the marshal so that that is the one so we've got one vote that we don't continue with the marshal marshals full stop and that will mean that the budget goes out of you know for yeah. that would be wiped out the second one is that we keep a budget for mm -hmm. security and decide what we're going to use it on at a later date okay. Can I ask one question about the first proposal? If we said, are we saying no to marshals, and then that means even if we kept some budget for security, and say some businesses in the high street and other people came in and said we can top up that budget, we still wouldn't be allowed to marshals. No, 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 the, no. First, the first one is that we're just cancelling the marshals. Okay. And therefore, the money that's been put on one side of the budget for them mm -hmm. would go full stop. Right. The second one is that we might not be going for the marshals, but we're keeping a budget, mm -hmm. not necessarily the one that's in there, yep. but a budget, and deciding what that is going to be spent on at a later date. Okay. Right. You're right. That's part of the budget. Well, then, to mm -hmm. myself, jump in and say what we're really saying is we're not going to automatically renew the current marshal arrangement. Because well, we, we don't have anything to cancel, so we don't have marshals mm -hmm. at the moment. Well, so we actually we're, we're going to say, we're not going to automatically renew it, and then once we've made our budget, we can say, then we decide what we want to spend towards marshals. I'm happy to look at alternatives, yeah. yeah. So, we, so you don't want to have brought up the idea of cancelling full stop? Oh, I think it's already not renewing. No, not renewing. No, what you're saying is, so the proposal is that we say that the budget is going to be discussed whether we and what we're going to do with it. So it will be A, how much we're going to spend, and B, what we're going to spend it on. Is that the proposal? I think it's just the fact that we're not going to automatically renew. Yeah, I think we should we're going to stop the tendering process at the moment. Mm -hmm. The proposal is not to renew the commercial mm -hmm. contract. Yeah. yeah. Might be proposed, I second it. Okay, then we'll go with it. So, need to know who's voting for that. I'll hope that. One, two, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And against? Right. Okay then. Right. Okay then. So the budget. discussions about this budget. So there has been going round and round in circles, um, which is a good thing. Um, there have been criticisms in the past that were too quick just to wave stuff through without thinking about it, or even things that were just suggested to us. So we have been through it. Um, I have received a lot of feedback from the public. They, like me, find it almost impossible to actually follow the current format of the budget, but you sit there and you start to get used to some of the cost centres and work out where the money's going. We started off with a huge seemed like a huge increase in the preset. Um, we then decided that was too big and could we cut everything and get it right down? The feedback was, don't cut everything. So we kind of went around again, 
And I think we've kind of gone, the budget proposal which is there again is too large again. Um, I've not had feedback from any single resident saying that they either support rises at all, particularly, and certainly not in the region of 16%. I think that's unpalatable uh, for me. So <laughs> I um, think we should keep our precept within our own published guidelines, which say it should be no more than the rate of inflation, which is going to be about 8.5-9% or so. Um, still understanding that's relatively high, it's still breaking all our pre-budget uh, forecasts. So we're going to have to redo the forecasts because they're just works fiction now, which has exceeded the next four years. We probably should have updated those before we start discussing the budget. But as it is, I think um, we can work within a figure of 85 or 9%, keeping budgets for things that we want, mm -hmm. central services, youth services, there have been some cuts in Danes, but they're not as much as we're probably making out. <coughs> um, we might be able to keep some money for security services, but I think we should do it within that sort of level of, of increase, which should be sort of 16 pence a week for a band B, I believe. Um, and certainly not as much as 33 pence. Uh, and I think one of the things that's been really useful for everybody is if we had finance, well, the first thing to know is the finance committee could not push propose the precept anyway because it has to come to council. But by having a working party, it actually allowed us to effectively discuss things, albeit in private, I get that, but people have to have discussions to actually understand what everyone's talking about. It's very difficult to have really productive conversations in this environment. So as much as we should have debates in this environment, we have to have proper discussions about this budget. And I think we probably all understand it now. And that's been the benefit of having a working party rather than going straight to resolution. Mm -hmm. So I propose, if it goes any further, that we look to keep our budget within our own stated guidelines, which will be eight or eight and a half percent or so. So do, yeah, we, do we have anybody who is able to make calculations so that we can <coughs> make that decision today? Yep. Well, <laughs> I'll put my hand on at that point. I, <laughs> I can do that. Um, but I mean, I, I agree with Gordon. I think over the years we've always tried to keep our uh, increase under the rate of inflation. Um, this year we have got um, greater costs, but then so has everybody. And costs of things have risen significantly. And I think that's, you know, everybody is recognising that in our daily lives that things have gone up by a lot. Um, and I think there are some adjustments we could make to the budget that would bring the increase um, to around the 8% mark. Um, and there are some specific items that, that we could put forward to do that. Um, and we could go through those if people want. Um, I agree with Gordon and Brian that you know, seeing or read some of the, the figures and ways that they can they can move the budget down to that level and <coughs> we're happy with it. We were the, that that headline of near sixty percent sort of became the one that we were looking at. It, it was never one. You know, we, the last meeting we had there were still different options on the table <coughs> at four different options that we went away with. We had other things that we could uh, either choose things to do or not choose things to do. And I think there's some of the other elements here. Um, Working with some of those, as well as some cost cutting in other areas, to kind of bring it down. I think it is achievable to get it within that nice set. Um, well, Richard first, and then we'll go back over. Um, we spent a whole meeting on this. We ended up. <coughs> arriving at this budget after quite intense discussion and we agreed at that meeting that it would come before this council within for uh, the normal procedure of the council noting or accepting budget 
<coughs> we have no time left. We cannot have another budget meeting to discuss how the budget is going to be set up. We've wasted three meetings on <coughs> bickering over this. We have a lot to do. Town environment, £136,000. That's what we need to spend on the town environment. <coughs> Central services, council office, staff, equipment, £203,000. That's what we need to spend there. We can't keep fooling around with this. We've, we've discussed it, we agreed. There was a majority decision to accept these figures and put them before this meeting. There was a majority vote. Right? Not a, a <coughs> Not total majority, but there was a majority vote for this thing. And I think we'd be um, shooting our, doing more than shooting ourselves in the foot if we decide to change it. Now, 32, 32 pence additional on the fan the house will get us this budget this budget means that we can do everything that we have got on our books to do. Hannah, no mic. Well, it's just a really important that I was a working party and therefore it can't make decisions and though it can come back with a recommendation to the full council mm -hmm. but now is the time to make a decision on that. Um, <coughs> Yes, uh, and, you, and you can look on those uh, extensive working party discussions as having got us a long way along the way as we reflect and uh, work out all the implications. So we come to this, which is a moment of decision when the full council meets and makes a decision. To put the 33 pence into perspective, Baines is putting the adult precept, uh, that's, that's to look after all the adults in Baines, of course, the uh, vulnerable adults, etc., up by 2%, that's 61 pence a week on a band of the property. And the 3% council tax, uh, apart from the adult uh, precept that Baines is raising, puts 90 pence on a band of the property. So little Miss Emma Norton, with no statutory responsibilities, uh, reckons to put a third, or more than a third in fact, of what Baines is putting on, on the council tax. Uh, this puts a, a sort of perspective on how unacceptable this large increase is. Well, we're here to reflect the views of the public, and the public have stated on several occasions that they wouldn't entertain increases by 60%. And we haven't wasted time by coming back time and time again, trying to reduce it down to a reasonable level. <coughs> That's what we've done. We've got it down to a reasonable level that I think we can't we can't get it any lower and i think that would be acceptable to most of the public and that is not a waste of time if i'll come in i think um this idea of 32 pence a week is not very much it's obviously a fallacy because it's 33 percent on what it already is so you can see 33 pence on top of anything isn't very much extra but if you're starting off with a high figure lots of councils have smaller precepts than we do bigger councils have smaller precepts than we do and um, we need to get ourselves out of the habit of saying this is how much it costs, the taxpayer will foot the bill. We need to start setting budgets and working within the budget. So if we have a budget for managing the public open spaces, we set the budget and we manage the public open spaces within the budget. We don't just put the budget up to an infinite amount effectively saying, right, we need extra facilities, we need extra this. No, we set a budget and we work within it and that's how we should proceed. Um, we can't just keep on reading people's uh, people, uh, people, people's tax like it's on a piggy bank. As, so. I'm not, as, as you know, I don't get involved in the arguments, <laughs> the discussion, sorry. But in actual fact, that figure there was only 2000 last year, so it is up by 33 pence. So that is correct. That's, thank you, that's, 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 that was the initial proposal. 
Yeah, but this is what we're talking about, the 33%. Yes. yes. No, no. So it, that's, it, it is actually. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But that's not saying anything about anything else that anyone has said. I see. Uh -huh. uh, do we have... Yes. Yeah. So, uh, the discussions were, were all useful. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and really, to, we, in, well, to show that, that we, we haven't really got a, a plan. I mean, we've, we've got figures of... Um, of what we're saying, this is what it will cost to, to run that aspect of the town council, mm. this is what it will cost. But we, we haven't got, well, I'm not aware that if we've got priorities and this is where we are spending our money. We know what areas we want to spend in the long space. We want events and we want to encourage um, you know, leisure and you know support of various things going on in the town. But we, we get, this is a strategy that the, the budget is being uh, allocated towards and the, the, you know, sort of the plan for the future, that's, that's sort of become plain that it's what we need, something to justify, need to explain <coughs> why these we're increasing certain areas, we're increasing others, and how it all fits together. So the, 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 the you're saying that you know this money is allocated to that thing and that's what it costs to run it, it that's not true. We can make savings in all sorts of areas, or the potential to make savings, <coughs> in areas, and we can decide on the priorities my sticking point and the other meeting was the was after we'd agreed on a, on a figure on, on or we're getting toward a figure a a, a warden um system budget anyway mm. and then that was on that's why we ended up with several different versions of the budget with which was that was the one you know the, the, the basic one but then all these other bits were added on and that's where the stumbling block came we never agreed on any of those they were always open we've always deferred of these meetings till this point. <coughs> at this point of this meeting, my understanding is that we need to agree the precepts, uh, which it, it's kind of unfortunate that you know some people have worked out that we can make savings and what we can afford to, to, to lose to bring the precept down to the eight point something percent, which is where some of us feel it should be. Um, it's, you know, that evidence is, is around, but it's not been presented to full council to make. Uh, but you know, I think my understanding is we need to agree the precept, but we don't need to agree the budget, how that money is, is allocated. So we need to decide how much of it is not precisely. We've got we're very close to deciding where it goes. There's one or two that you know for half of them that's you know some of them more sizable than others, but there's some areas where there's debate. But you know we're very close to deciding what we do. We just need to sign the precepts then that will start working out the issue. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, it's worth knowing that the clerk and his staff <coughs> devoted a whole day to preparing this budget. Now, the clerk and her staff are the ones that know what we spend the money on, in the piece by piece. <coughs> so, I think that we should in all fairness give consideration to the clerks and the, the, the staff's superior knowledge about what this, how this council spends the money that it gets in. <coughs> and the original figure was bigger than that, the one that we have got down here on this um, draft budget leaflet. And we have we've pared it down to that. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, uh, yes, sir. There are some things the, the street marshals are a case in point where um, <coughs> we're now taking or you know and making decisions that have actually changed the thoughts of the budget. Um, so I don't think, although yes, I agree the the clerk and the staff. Uh, did do some good work on the budget, and you know I would mm. never take that away. Um, there are things that we can change because this budget is for the for the year going forward, and a lot of the, a lot of the work that the clerk and staff uh, did was sort of based on last year's expenditure. That's fair, that's fair enough. You have to project that forward. So the administration costs and that sort of thing have all got to be projected forward because you know 
want to work out roughly what they are, but there are some projects and things which uh, we're budgeting for which have not happened yet or what are going to change. Right. It's worth well, making one final point that a big part of our budget is obviously the town hall. So we can't say we're not being forward thinking. That is a big project. It's a capital project. It's one with some economic underpinning. And um, unlike many of the projects which are excellent for aesthetics and and it's great to walk down the Wellbrook Walk, the, the town hall, which is, seems to be crumbling and was in more need of restoration than ever before every time Nicola comes to visit, will be a money-making asset for the community in a few years' time. And that is actually going to be uh, something that's actually going to generate money. And um, so we're investing in in, in something as well. That is part of our, that's a big part of our budget and that's forward-looking, ambitious plan and, and, and it will, it will increase footfalls in this <laughs> minority. <laughs> what you can, can, can I, Michael? Could I perhaps up, uh, ask if we can ask the town clerk um, whether he thinks what Martin said would be legal? Can you simply put forward a preset uh, request to bring for that, uh, having a budget to back it up? Right, so um, <coughs> the uh, your requirement um, is to uh, set a preset, and that's if you don't send that in tomorrow, um, you'll be running in fresh air. So you need to set a preset. We've gone through a budgeting process, um, and uh, it seems to be changing. Uh, uh, as time goes by. So the option that you have is that subject to um, <coughs> uh, what is proposed and seconded and whether it falls or not, is you could potentially set a preset based on a percentage increase, which is not quite as simple as just adding 8 or 9% on to last year's uh, DBAN because that has changed slightly because your tax base has increased um, slightly. So um, <coughs> the, uh, what your proposal would have to be to um, set a preset um, based on uh, X percentage uh, of the, uh, the D-band um, subject to uh, reviewing the budget um, as soon as possible and amending it so that those uh, that the, the basic budget figures because you're over a certain amount of um, uh, you're, you're over a certain amount um, and by law you have to create um, a leaflet so you would you're quite within your rights so what, what you're required to do by law is to set a preset Stop setting the budget. Um, it would help if the preset reflected the budget, but you're obviously um, it's a bit of a move, movable piece. So your requirement is to set a preset to that, um, and I think based on some discussions um, that have been had up to this item, the way forward for this council um, would be to. Um, uh, to focus on setting a preset and accepting that uh, a review of the budget to, um, uh, to fit it within um, the, uh, the available funding um, needs to happen sooner rather than later. And that is based on the fact that uh, when austerity kicked in, um, that's what principal authorities had to do. They, they had to review their services based on the fact that the government were giving them less and less each year in um, grant funding. So in 2010, they were getting 78% of their gross funding directly from grant. Now it's um, almost insignificant because it's uh, raised locally. So, so that would be um, uh, that would be my advice. What I would say is that um, 
just based on uh, uh, where your uh, previous slide has gone, um, their starting precept on the fee plan is £96, um, and they are raising £2 million um, because it's a bigger um, area. So uh, having a D band of 105 H1 is not um, particularly um, high for a large town council. So that's 325 pounds a year D band um, because they're taking on services. So it's not uh, your your figures here might be quite large within your area, but they are not um, uh, they're, they're not. Huge compared to quite a lot of large town parish councils. <coughs> so that, that's just to put it out there. But what you need to do tonight is to set the precept. So far, right. so well, <laughs> um, I would like to propose then um, a precept increase of 8%. Which would account uh, amount to what as a that net budget expenditure? Um, an income from the council tax of just over £469,000. Um, so which is about 30,000 less than um, was under the proposed budget. Um, that's an increase of £8.52 per annum for band D and bring the band D to just over 115 I'm sorry, I need to, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to sneak into the other side, I'm sorry, can you just move this chair a bit, I'm really sorry to mess up the scene, I should have made sure I had a route before I restart it, shouldn't I? So you said 115 what for a band D? 469 469 1893 that's the D band of 150 yeah. yeah and proposed by Brian and seconded by Gordon I'd like to also propose that we have a um, Another working party meeting in order to yeah uh, budget for that mm -hmm. that figure yeah definitely needed mm -hmm. should it should it be one that we invite public to observe yeah mm -hmm. behave yourself to behave yourself <laughs> well, the public can be yeah totally it's something we can certainly think about in the interests of transparency yeah okay <coughs> right so. Go on to 223, the leaflet. So obviously it would have to be redone. So. Um, <coughs> no? no? All right, so that all that, or do you need it? Yeah? Yeah, okay. So 224, Finance and Operations Committee. Consider reinstating this committee. I think. Um, I can see the reasons for this, but I think it's a bad idea, unfortunately. Um, for a start, it's not long. It's not that long since we got rid of the finance committee. Um, I understand some of the issues that have been raised about having some of these finance things in full council, but I think through, um, let's say, clever time management, possibly calling the odd, ha odd ad hoc working party meeting, I think it's better that things like grant applications and other things 
come to full council. Um, and I think having the, some sort of working party to discuss these things, which are really complicated. You can't go through things like the budget um, easily, in, in, but there's a finance and operations committee or a full council. So I think the, the, um, the working party has been invaluable for that. Mm. And I don't, mm. I don't really want an extra meeting in. So I see the arguments for it, but I think it's, uh, I think we should keep that current system for a little bit longer. Uh, yeah, well, I also, um, I mean, we did have a working party for many years and that did work well, but um, there were comments from other councillors who won't, weren't part of that meeting, but they weren't party to discussions on items such as grants and also, you know, how the expenditure was going. They felt they didn't have a say in that, um, which was one of the reasons I felt we, you know, we brought the finance into the full committee meeting so that everybody had a chance to make comments on on finance matters. So um, I'm I'm not going to support this. I'm afraid. Okay. Um, I had an issue about this particular finance committee because decisions were being made about all councillors being able to make those decisions. I being one of them. I got on that committee and I was coming to meetings to find things were decided I didn't have to say. Okay, Steve. But any councillor can go to any meeting they want. Yeah. And they can, if you want, take part in discussions. They, vote, they have to be elected to that committee to be able to vote on it, but they can take part in any discussion they want to on any actual working party. Yeah, but I got back out of actually going to those meetings, that's why I didn't know what was going on until... Well, no, you can go to every meeting, you can't every any councillor can go to any meeting. Michael. Again, can, uh, the legality, um, can you have a working party which uh, all councillors belong to? No. You can. Okay. It's the council. Well, no, 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 no a working party council. which can't make decisions. No, the uh, a working party is um, it's an informal gathering, which is why it doesn't uh, you can you don't have to adhere to the three clear days, and that's why people have working or why councils have working parties <coughs> because it doesn't have to you don't have to publish the agenda uh, within the requirements of the law. It's a committee or a subcommittee, then they have to follow the local government act seventy two. Um, but uh, on, the, on the other side, you obviously can't make decisions of the working party. <clears throat> so um, it, it's, uh, uh, it, it's uh, uh, because the working party hasn't got um, any authority, if you like, um, then uh, it's, uh, it's not restricted in numbers. The committees are. Um, uh, uh, there, there is actually, I, I couldn't find it for you, but I have read that um, you can't actually have a committee made up of councils, uh, because it's then called the council. Um, but I have known that uh, system in place, uh, particular council, uh, which was uh, essentially illegal. Sadly, it was what I was at, <laughs> but I did inherit it. So, um, uh, so yeah, uh, as a working party, it's open to all um, to, uh, to to formally discuss and, uh, and talk about. And I think open to the public as well, if you want to say the wrong. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, it's, uh, um, uh, I think giving notice is, um, is going to be your uh, your challenge because uh, um, uh, you're not uh, so you're not being governed by uh, legal requirements. So if you're going to have a, an open meeting of a working party, obviously you don't have standard orders covering the way you conduct it. So you'll be looking for more interaction, almost a participatory budgeting uh, situation uh, within the council. Um, so it would be. Um, it would be a much more open and fluid um, uh, uh, discussion. Um, the, the downside really is keeping uh, control 
of the uh, debate and, uh, and, uh, and people observing um, the uh, uh, civility of respect. <coughs> Well, I propose that we reinstate the financing of working party, <clears throat> principally because we can't contain finance and ops and all the other business within a normal council meeting time. Yeah. And we have, um, it, be, it was becoming a norm that we would uh, suspend standing orders and extend the meeting time and extend the meeting time. And there was one occasion when um, the councillor objected strongly to extending the meeting. So that's why I wrote this. I'd like to see us return to it. <coughs> <laughs> okay. Can I just say? Point about, I don't really think your point about struggling to fit it in, but personally, I'd rather have a slightly longer full council meeting once a month rather than having extra meeting. Is there any working parties? No, no, the working party can meet mm -hmm. as and when it likes, but for the there sake there of it, it's actually another meeting. But it doesn't need to meet every single time, and people don't need to attend because it's not a working party, it's informal. It means full council will make the three decisions, everybody's invited who's on the council. And if we need slightly longer to discuss some things, I think we should take it. I've heard that other councils have three hour meetings. We might normally get it done in two and a half hours. We could even start a little bit earlier. But for people with jobs and families and lots of stuff to do, if we don't have to have an extra committee meeting, because I'm already on the, well, several members are on the planning committee as well, if we don't need an extra committee, I think the current system should be given a little bit longer, because I think this actually could work quite well. Well, I will just say, and it's uh, 23 minutes to the end, and we have 13 items still on the agenda. Can I so, propose uh, attending to my first? I'll second that. Tonight? Mm. Okay. Well, then, don't you want to vote for that? Yeah. Everyone happy with that? No, no, so it's no, 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 no. Lock the door, still. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 <coughs> Right, so um, I know that's cut in, but we are making a final decision on yeah. item 224. One could propose uh, yeah. to accept it. Yeah. yeah, right, one proposal. Someone second that, but it stays as it is. We don't have a finance and ops committee. P. Yeah. So, would, they, would you like to vote? Sorry, I'm not sure what we're voting. We're, we're Richard not voting. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. That was my error. Richard proposed that we formed a Finance and Operations Committee. Is there anyone to second that? 